so I, uh, I was interested in this case because uh, there's this fairly recent article that uh, talked about this new uh, vascular phenomenon in the retina, and there was this case that I was dealing with at the VA, and I thought that this would be an interesting way to kind of highlight this new disease phenomenon uh, and also talk about the possible ways that we can uh, alter our management uh, in terms of dealing with hard to manage uh, leaky vessels. That's the title of this uh, presentation. So uh, it always starts with a case, right? So we have a 75-year-old male who came to our clinic complaining of zigzag, curvy visual disturbance. He said it's been ongoing for about three days, uh, occasionally no noticing a dark spot in his visual uh, field, in the center of his visual field, but denied any flashes, floaters, or headaches. Uh, his past ocular history was just significant for cataracts and some mild diabetic retinopathy. On examination, he had some mild visual acuity change as well as uh, tra uh, trace ocular surface uh, disease as well as just mild uh, cataracts. On dilated fundus exam, as you can see in his, with his right uh, fundus, it's pretty much unremarkable, uh, no issues to speak of. With his left eye, uh, left fundus, um, it's probably hard to appreciate, but if you look in the center, uh, you might be able to tell that there's this blunted foveal reflex, uh, as well as this kind of this grayish, um, indistinct uh, area to the fovea. Uh, on OCT of his right eye, uh, as you can see, it's pretty much unremarkable except for an ERM. <laughs> With his right eye, or with his left eye, um, you can see that he has this, based on the infrared uh, on false view, you can see that there's this central foveal hyper, hyporeflectance. And then when you go through the OCT, what you notice is that he has this serous uh, uh, PED. Uh, and in terms of the central macular thickness, it was about 403 micrometers. Uh, IVFA, um, as you go through time from the early phase down to the bottom with the late phase, you can see that as it starts to evolve, you can see this uh, hyperfluorescence uh, significant of a pooling effect in the uh, foveal area uh, with uh, an appreciable notch to the uh, pooled area as you can see in this uh, image here. So again, we have this 75-year-old male who had this three-day onset of left eye metamorphopsia with this central negative scotoma, and then on examination had this mild visual acuity change, uh, subretinal fluid on OCT, as well as the serous notch uh, PED. So um, when you think about a differential for a notched PED uh, with subretinal fluid, uh, all of these uh, vasculopath vasculopathies can potentially cause a serous exudative process. Um, however, what we need to do is further delineate what could be the cause uh, of this particular patient's um, uh, issue. So this will need, this requires further testing. And so with IC, ICG angiography, we can actually highlight uh, what may be going on in the choroidal um, area. So as you can see in this video, um, you know, what you first notice here is just central uh, hypofluorescence to the ICG. Uh, but for the most part, a pretty much unremarkable um, ICG angiography. And then even later on in, in the, uh, in the uh, angiography, you can see, again, the underlying choroidal vessels are unremarkable, except for this overlying uh, hypofluorescent area. And again, highlighting that notched region to the, uh, to the area of the hypofluorescent region. Uh, and then um, OCT angiography is another means that we can actually uh, identify and even look at the vasculature. This is a representation of a normal uh, individual with an OCT angiography. And what I wanted to highlight um, is just uh, from, from looking at these top four panels here, you can see this is the inner retina with the superficial plexus, uh, capillary plexus. This is the deep capillary plexus. And then we get into the uh, outer retinal uh, area, uh, and then we go into the chorio capillaris. And this is pretty much the, what you would expect to see on a normal uh, OCT angiography. In our patient, uh, what you see here is, again, normal inner retinal layer, capillary plexus, 
Uh, outer retina layer seems un unremarkable, but then when you look at the choriocapillaris area, there's this large hypo or just large dropout of, of vascular tissue. And then of course you can see what that, where that corresponds to in the, um, in the OCT itself. So at this point, our plan for this individual who has this notched PED, we wanted to start with uh, anti-VEGFs. So Avastin was the, was the common first choice, what we, if, what we use in the clinic. Uh, after about a three-shot series, we would then reevaluate to see uh, what changes might have occurred uh, as a result of therapy. So over uh, a segment of um, three, three to four months, you can see that um, as we are injecting the patient with the, uh, with the anti-VEGF, you can see that the, initially he had a decrease in his central uh, macular thickness, but then eventually plateaued um, at some point. And so um, we were kind of at this stage scratching our heads as to, you know, what's going on here. You know, essentially you have this process that's not amenable to anti-VEGF therapy. Could there be something else going on that might explain why um, this is occurring? And should we alter our treatment as a result? So this gets into uh, this recent discovery of this uh, perifolvial exudative vascular anomaly, anomalous complex, or PVAC. Uh, it was first discovered by some French authors in 2011. Uh, and so this case report, they looked at two individuals and noticed these large perifolvial aneurysms uh, that weren't associated with any type of retinal inflammation or vascular disease. Uh, in their paper, their initial paper, what they talked about was this, these aneurysms that had these intraretinal pathologies but had no, no abnormal choroidal findings. And in terms of their OCT, uh, they were able to show that there was this hyperreflective lesion around what they call this PVAC uh, disease uh, as well as this inter surrounding intraretinal cystic edema. Uh, and then they obviously tried and attempted to treat with anti-VEGF, in this case, Lucentis. Uh, but again, they had no, no actual improvement to, the, uh, to, the, to, that, to these patients' condition. And so their hypothesis at this point was, you know, could this be some type of retinal vascular endothelial cell degeneration, uh, thus explaining why an anti-VEGF therapy um, may not be effective? Uh, later on, uh, this paper came out uh, which uh, talked about expanding the spectrum of PVAC and isolating or at least trying to figure out what are the multimodal ophthalmic imaging features associated with this disease and in order to help us understand better, you know, how, of how to classify this, um, this, this, this disease. So this is a retrospective cohort study, uh, a multi-center uh, approach looking, and they were able to isolate 15 eyes with a mean age of 73 uh, for their patient population, uh, ranging, again, between 46 to 90 years of age. Uh, their inclusion criteria, they were looking at individuals older than 18 who had this unilateral lesion associated with this perifolvial large retinal aneurysm. In terms of exclusion, uh, they wanted to just exclude any other type of retinal or uh, systemic issues that could confound the findings that they, uh, that they were looking at. So this is a very busy slide. Um, what I wanted to basically highlight in this, in this graph or this table is just to uh, show that the, again, the mean age was somewhere around 73. It was a unilateral process. Um, and some of these individuals actually had um, uh, other conditions uh, associated with it like ARMD, as well as myopia. Uh, but for, in terms of the best, visual, best corrective visual acuity, uh, the worst visual acuity noted was about 2040. So not much in terms of visual, de uh, visual acuity uh, deterioration. Uh, and so the authors in this paper basically had um, uh, concluded that this, this disease phenomenon has a pretty much a stable course. Although it's not uh, successfully treated with an anti-VEGF therapy, uh, functionally and anatomically, it seems to just maintain um, um, a stable uh, condition. And so what they were able to uh, find out with OCT was that, um, you know, when you're looking at individuals with this PVAC phenomena, they typically have this round hyperreflective hyper lesion. Uh, it's, uh, they have these intraretinal cystic spaces. And again, the most important part is there is no choroidal neovascularization associated with uh, this disease. 
And as this is a representative sample, a patient from their study. And as you can see, there's this interretinal uh, vascular lesion here uh, with, no with no signs of any choroidal change um, whatsoever. And in terms of their uh, ICG and I IVFA, uh, they were able to show that there is these well-defined retinal hypofluorescent lesions uh, with um, variable leakage at, in late frames. And that shows here, again, with this representative uh, ICG and I IVFA, again, just kind of this uh, late leakage uh, with um, no other findings on the uh, imaging. And then, of course, with the OCT angiography, what they were able to find was that there's this rarefaction of retinal capillaries around the lesion with uh, no connectivity between the, ret ret the retinal capillary plexus as well as the chorial capillaris. <clears throat> and again, this is a representative uh, image showing the uh, capillary system in the retina versus the, capillary, the chorial capillaris and there not being any type of connection between the lesion here with the chorial capillaris and of course this rarefaction of the surrounding capillary bed. So there are many, or many, many hypotheses regarding uh, the pathogenesis associated with PVEC. Uh, but for the authors, they thought that this is probably associated with an idiopathic retinal vascular abnormality. Uh, one thought is that this may be a variant of type 1 MACTEL. Uh, but this is, poss this is most likely not the case because with MACTEL, um, you can see that there are differences in the anatomical changes as well as the demographics of who are affected, as well as their response to anti-VEGF therapy. The other thought is that could this be a variant of, say, type 3 neovascularity, uh, a RAP lesion? Again, this is probably not the case because when you look at the, the actual anatomical changes associated with the type 3 chordal neovascularity or neovascularization so, as well as PVAC, they're different. And then, of course, the response to VEGF therapy is uh, totally different between the two. So this then goes back to our patient. Does our patient have this PVAC phenomenon? And now, what I want to do is compare their representative sample or patient versus our patient. And again, showing the differences in the OCT with this intraretinal pathology versus more of a sub uh, RPE, sub -ser or serous PED, as well as some subretinal fluid, but not much in terms of intraretinal changes. And then looking at the IVFA, again, our, their patient uh, shows this. Uh, this anomalous uh, aneurysm with uh, this late leakage. In our case, we had this patient who had pooling along with this uh, notched PED. And then finally, when you look at the OCT angiography, you see that there's this lesion here that has no connectivity to the chorial capillaris and this perilesional uh, uh, dropout of capillaries. Uh, in our patient, the inner as well as the uh, outer uh, plexus was unremarkable, and then when you look at the chorea capillaries, there is this large dropout here. So again, going back to the question, does our patient have this PVAC phenomenon? Um, most likely not. Um, this is probably more likely a polyploidal choroidal vasculopathy, and um, our plan in terms of treatment is to try a different approach. Instead, instead of doing a Bastin, uh, we wanted to try a LEA and see if you know, there's a possible response with ILEA. Uh, otherwise, if there is no response to three trials of ILEA, then we could go into either photodynamic therapy or even a subthreshold uh, micropulse laser as a potential way of treating it. And that's it. Is there any 